So to apply the divergence theorem to a couple of examples, two, our first two examples come from two-dimensional uh, cases that we studied today. And the third example is an invitation for us to think about what it would look like in three dimensions. So the first uh, asks us to find the outward flux of the vector field minus x minus y through the circle whose equation is x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 4. Um, and so to find that, first question that we might ask is what's the flux density of this particular vector field? And that flux density is just the divergence. So we find the divergence of this vector field. It's the x partial derivative of the x component added to the y partial derivative of the y component. And so that x partial derivative of the x component is negative 1. The y partial of the y component is also negative 1. We add those together, we get negative 2. So this is an example of a vector field whose flux density everywhere in the xy plane is equal to negative 2. So that the flux will be equal to, according to the divergence theorem that we came up with today, the double integral of the function negative 2, the flux density, over the disk which is bounded by the, uh, the function, the, the curve x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 4. Well, that curve happens to be a circle of radius 2, right? x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared. Right? There's, my, there's my radius that I'm seeing over there on the right-hand side. And so when I set up this integral, because the flux density is a constant, we can just pull that constant out of my integral. And what's left is the integral of 1 dA. That's just the area of my curve, the area of the, of the region bounded by my curve. And so when we do this evaluation, it's just negative 2 times the area of my circle. That area of that disk is pi times the radius squared. So pi times 2 squared, that's 4 pi times negative 2, gives me negative 8 pi. The second question asked us to find the outward flux of the vector field y comma x over a triangle whose vertices are 0, 0, 3, 4, and 4 minus 3. Um, same strategy, right? that the first thing we should check because we have a closed curve is we should check the flux density. Uh, and the flux density for this example, the dot product of the derivative operator with f is the x partial derivative of the x component, which is y, added to the y derivative of the uh, y component, which is x in this case. But those derivatives are each equal to 0, and so they add up to 0. And so the flux, according, again, to the divergence theorem, is just the double integral of 0 over this triangular region. Well, we don't need to do any explicit tape measuring to integrate a constant function over a region whose area we know, and especially if that constant is 0, because then that integral is just going to be equal to 0 times the area of my region, which is just another name for 0. So these are some two-dimensional expressions of the divergence theorem. They can give us the flux out of a closed curve inside of the two-dimensional uh, plane just by a double integral of the flux density, which is just another name for the divergence. And so the three-dimensional example I asked us to think about was what if we want to take all six of the faces of the unit cube, so situated with one corner at 0, 0, 0 in three space and residing in the first octant of three space, um, and we want to find the outward flux of this three-dimensional vector field through those six faces. Well, the prediction is that we could find a flux density function in three dimensions in exactly the same way that we found flux density functions in two dimensions, by taking the dot product of the derivative operator with my vector field. Right? So that would be the x partial derivative of the x component, so the x partial derivative of xy, that gives me this y right here, plus the y partial derivative of the y component, but that's 1 minus z, so its y derivative is 0. It doesn't depend on y at all. Same thing with the z partial derivative of the z component. Well, the z component is sine of xy, so it doesn't depend on z at all, so its derivative is also 0. And so the divergence of this vector field as a three-dimensional vector field is just equal to the function y. Right? So the flux density of this three-dimensional vector field is just the, the scalar function y everywhere in xyz space. And so the flux out of that unit cube is just going to be the triple now integral of the function y, the flux density y, over the unit cube, which we can describe by tape measuring the cube in three dimensions. x runs from 0 to 1, y runs from 0 to 1, z runs from 0 to 1. So we do that integral as a triple iterated integral. We come up with a value of 1 half. That's the flux uh, of this vector field out of this box. So the really nice thing about the divergence theorem compared to Green's theorem is that the divergence theorem is 
easily scaled up to any number of dimensions that we like. Because dot products work in any number of dimensions that we like, we can find any flux density of our vector field, no matter how many dimensions it lives in, 2, 3, 25, 7,806, right? However many dimensions our space has, we can find the flux density in the same way. It's just the dot product of the derivative operator with the my vector field components. Um, and so then integrating that flux density over the appropriate n-dimensional solid region will give us a measurement of the flux of that vector field out of the boundary of that region. This is in contrast to circulation, uh, because circulation involves this scalar cross product. Uh, we don't know exactly how to generalize that into higher dimensions. What we will see tomorrow and the day after is how to generalize at least that idea of circulation up into a three-dimensional example. The problem is that a closed curve in three-dimensional space doesn't just determine a unique filled-in region. It could be a flat region. It could be a curved region. So we're going to need to also grapple with how do I integrate vector fields along surfaces in three dimensions instead of just flat spaces. Um, so that's what we're going to see over the next couple days.